Beloved, if you know the glory of the things waiting for us, you will not, you will not play, you will not toy with the things you are toying with. May we not become like Esau, who because of a, pour, a, a, a pot of porridge, just in one split moment, he sold his birthright. Who will not sell our birthright. Look at verse 13. But he that shall endure, that word is very, very key. He that shall endure unto the end, that means pressure is going to come and mount. But God is saying you need, you have a need for endurance. You have to endure. He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Look at verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the anointing, or there, don't believe it. 24. For there shall arise false anointings and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive what? The very elect. That means the flood will be so much. Flood of deception will be so much that if the very elect will not discern with the eyes of the inner man, they, is, they easily can be swept off their feet. Praise the Lord. The Lord was teaching on account of need to endure in Luke chapter 18. In verse 1, I will just read verse 1 and read verse 8. And then, take two more scriptures. And we close. Look at Luke 18. Look at Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to do what not to do what you know what the meaning of faith is cowardice faith heartedness to lose heart to be desperate you understand the things that break our fellowship with endurance are people that are easily carried away by fear. Maybe this thing will kill me. Maybe this thing will kill me. Maybe people are laughing at me because I am this, or because I am poor, or because this one is not forthcoming. Oh, let not God, let no people say, where is your God? Abraham, the Bible said about Abraham that he hoped against hope. Abraham was not looking for somebody to pray for him. And that was God's friend. God placed Abraham under intense pressure. If you are God's friend, he will place you under intense pressure when he chooses to do. The Bible says, the child that he loves, what does he do? He chastises. But the son that he receives, what does he do? He scourges him. Sometimes God decides to scourge you not because you have offended. Amen. Austin Sparks said that when the Bible says the son that God receives is scourge, that it is because that is the platform to step into spiritual responsibility. Can God test you? Can God depend on you? Can God depend on you. When God scourges you and puts you under intense pressure, are you going to break? Are you going to bust? Are you going to give way? Are you going to chicken out? Praise the Lord. So Jesus said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. In verse 8, you can read from verse 1 to verse 8. In verse 8, he says, I tell you that 
Now let's look from verse 6. The Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Sometimes you need to cry day and night. Though God be along with him. So there are some times character of certain situations and prayers demands that God will just choose to be along to test your patience. And when God is testing your patience, that's when you, you start looking for sorcerers who will pray on water for you and multiply things for you. You understand? Somebody cuts purple into two. And the, because you are looking for the fruits of the womb, you, you get one seed for a price. The, whatever the number of seeds, whatever the number of children you want are the number of purple seed that you buy. So, when you are going to give birth, what are you going to give birth to? Purple seeds. You get what I'm saying? Is that not foolish foolishness? Romans 1, from 18 to 26, the Bible says, because they failed to put God where he belongs, God also gave them up to what? Vile affections. Some elders came to Ezekiel in the days of Ezekiel, wanting to know the mind of God. God said, those men, tell them they have idols in their hearts. Exactly what they want is what I will give them. We need to wash our garments. Praise the Lord. Let me just take that scripture that Brother Shola took earlier on. Revelation chapter 9. Let me tell you, I think we need to read it. And then I will close on that note. If the Lord wills, we'll come back on some of these scriptures. Revelation chapter 9. Are we there? And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth. <clears throat> so many things can be said about this passage because it's a development from Revelation chapter 2 and 3. But in chapter 9, we found that a people have distinguished themselves and they have become stars. They have risen in the estate of ministry that are accepted by the church world and by even the natural world as stars of God. It's, 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 it's the heavens, spiritual heavens where the church operates, where this star is noted. So, it's a visible ministry in the church. And it's not one man. There are men who God called them in their infancy. They were innocent. And they grew in grace. And rose to the capacity of becoming a star. But suddenly, out of carelessness and watchlessness, they fell to the ground. To the ground. And because they fell, while they were still operating in the, in the heavens of spiritual capacities, they knew the mind of God. They had the anointing. They had the capacity. By the time they fall, God does not take many things of them. So, it is to them, they have what it takes. If you look at what is happening today, it's not suddenly that Spirits are loose from hell. When God's people are standing in their estate, they are, they are able to restrain evils, the siege from hell. They are, by their consecration and working right, they are able to resist evil and satanic invasion. But when they fall, because conduct is involved, 
Because morals are involved. Because character is involved. Their lives are opened up. And then their message is now taking over. Another government has taken control over their lives. And so, by the reason of their ministry now, spirits are released. So, we now find many in between, that are caught up in between the ministry of the fallen stars and the ministry of evil spirits that are released on account of their ministry now that they are fallen. Praise the Lord. So, there are many who actually we are, we are stars. The church has come to know, to know them as stars of God. Operating in the spiritual heavens. But because of carelessness, because of greed, because they have taken unrighteousness for gain, because of covetousness, they open up their lives and they fail. From that moment, their ministry will no longer take people to God, but their ministry will release spirits. So, there are those who already have encounter with God, but they fail. But on account of their ministry now, some spirits will take over some men. If you look at the picture in Revelation 13, when the devil has lost out in Revelation 12, the Bible said, John the Revelator said, and I saw the dragon, even though that's not the way King James rendered it. But he saw the dragon stand on the seashore. The seashore in that place is, is the seashore of humanity. Working on them. And producing another spirit out of them. So, when these stars of God fall, it gives opportunity for the devil to work on the hearts of many that are never born again. And many of them, they will, all we need today is to see a man of God in, in coat and collar. And he can do some demonstrations all over the place. That's all we need to accept him as a man of God. But the Bible says, Jesus Christ went teaching in all the synagogues and preaching the gospel. Before the Bible says, and he healed the sick. And the character of God's word in any age must be known. What is God emphasizing in a particular age is very important. The character of the word that is present in God's mind today is the word that is lifting man into perfection. Any word that is appealing to your soul, appealing to the things that have a beginning and an heading in this world, is not from the mind of God for now. Jesus said, Matthew, is that chapter 6? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all is accompanied righteousness. And God shall hide all that thing. So God's responsibility is to hide those things in the place of your faithfulness. You know how much pain and anguish of soul Anna had in, in 1 Samuel chapter 2? But did, did even, even Eli, she did not go to Eli. Praise the Lord. She did not seek for Eli's prayer. She went and rested and said, God, let me strike a deal with you. Give me this son and I will return him back to you. Those are the kind of men and women God is looking for. He's not a man or a woman under small pressure. They are looking for one prophet somewhere. A people must arise that God can trust. A people must arise that God can depend upon. Remember, God pointed Satan's attention to Job. He said, have you seen this my, this my man? That is just and perfect in his heart? Do you know that God takes Joy and pride 
if I can use that word pride, in a people that are constant, in character, that no, no, no pressure, whatever the intensity of the pressure, they cannot budge. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't worry. Tomorrow we are going to pray. We will pray all manner of prayers. Paul said to pray all manner of prayers. So don't think that this man believes that miracle has gone. Miracle has not gone. I, I, I talk in an open meeting in Monrovia. Where a man of God said, well, we know that by the things that these people are talking, we know that the age of miracle has passed. When I collected the mic, I said the age of miracle has not passed. And I, tell, I told the people that miracles, I see miracles with my koro koro eyes every day. Not by praying, not by seeking for sorcerers who pray on water. Let me tell you, if you don't believe and take this word, a day is coming that all things shall be made open and naked. It's a time that we must have to lift our eyes to the hills. For from there cometh our help. Our help will not come through sorcerers. No, God will not share his glory with any man. When some people wanted to, 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 to call for this, to, the, the, the life of, uh, what was the name of Gideon? That he uprooted our, our God. Can your God be uprooted? The father said, if the God be God, let him defend himself. The Bible says, why do the living have to go for the dead? Seeking what? In the land of the dead. Let us awake from the dust. Let us arise. Let us, Paul said, he said, quick yourself like men and lay hold. Amen. On the kingdom of God. Let's no longer be children. Bring toes here and there. What are we looking for that God cannot give you? I remember the testimony of T.L. Osborne in those days. He was a missionary to India. And he would pray and pray and nothing was happening. And he just saw one evangelist came and things were happening. And he was watching and watching. He said, are we serving the same God? He said, okay, I will no longer go on preaching assignment until I lock myself up and this Jesus reveal himself to me. And he went. He went back home and locked up himself and said, I'm not going to eat or drink until God appear to me. That's what radicalized his ministry. Sometimes, go with all what you think is your blessing to train you in the art of warfare. Have you seen a man who is, is, is he who has mastered arts of warfare? Go and ask him to share his testimony with you. Is there any man that God ever called? Listen around and God said, come, Elisha. He was lazy. Come. Elijah, you are lazy. Come. Jeremiah had not, nothing doing. Come. Is that the way God called people? The Lord will help his people. The Lord will help his people. If God cannot answer your prayer, don't go because of that to sorcerers. Don't go looking for power from the, from the kingdom of the dead. Because Jesus has said one thing that will characterize we can trace it we can trace it through revelation 13 to 14 to 15 to 16 unto the full maturity of that character in 17 and god has broken the series for us to know what is mine and what is purpose god is calling us away from the dust amen are we ready to come off the dust I believe as I talk today there are many who because of desperation I said the word faint in Matthew in Luke chapter 18 verse 1 the word faint there 
desperation, cowardice, faint heartedness, loose hearts, losing heart, losing courage can drive us to anything. But he doesn't, whether Paul said, if, if I have, if I don't have, it makes no difference. That's the character of faith that God is looking for at this time. Whether God gives me this or he does not give me, he does not change God's status from being God. So why must I go looking for sorcerers? There are sorcerers. A man of God told me, he has told, he has told me two, three times now, that they came to him to come and join them. I said, you mean with your korokoro eyes to come and join them? I had another story how that somebody, an elder in his church, went to the general vizier and said, I have contact with some person. He said, you people, you are just, your number is not changing year after year. That is what they do. That will introduce the man to you. What do they do? They will bury a live animal, whether it's a cow or whatever. The thing will die. And maggots, maggots begin to, so as the maggots are, are, are multiplying, so congregation is multiplying. So that's the church of maggots. Is that what you want? Is that the kind of Jew and people you are looking after or looking for to source for one need or the other? Paul said, whether we are awake or whether we are asleep, that we may be found in him. That's the key, brethren. I remember Judge Warnock saying several years ago in his writings that um, now this, this, this work is going across the world. That time he was mentioning how that hundreds of thousands of his materials were disappearing to Nigeria. And he said it's because God still wants that to be. That's why he's supplying the resources. He said the day that has fulfilled his cause, God will also dry up the resources and that does not make it to be on God. It's not God because we have what we want. It's God because his God is sovereign. He chooses to do what he wants to do. And when he does not do, he does not make him on God. He does not make him lesser than God. Jesus Christ, in the whole land of Israel, did he heal every, everybody that was sick? Did he raise every dead? He went to the pool of Bethesda. He went straight to the blind man. But the Bible said, there were multitudes of infirm. He went to just only one person. The Lord will bless you, brethren. Amen. I don't know whether I was talking saints to us this afternoon. If I'm not talking sense and God knows my heart, he will reach your heart. And he will press what was the burden in his heart into our hearts. The intent is that we may wash our garments. If we need to repent, let's not, before him, before nothing is hid, let's not feel ashamed. Let's repent. Say, God, this is coming straight to me. I have to leave this. Some of us, we have introduced people to sorcerers. A brother had problems, supposed to be a leader, and we heard that he's been romancing with a sorcerer. And when he was beating about the bush, we said frontally, Had you any encounter with this man? Because you are supposed to be a leader of the people. If the leader cannot, it's easy to say Abraham's blessings are mine. You know what Abraham went through? We have no time to look at it again. He that should be called a leader of God's people must be ready to endure all afflictions. Peter called it afflictions that are very temporary. We have no time to look at that. 
I think we need to pray. So that we can go and take our lunch. Can we be on our feet as we pray? I believe that this gathering is not for us to come and eat and drink. The, the, the kingdom of God does not consist in uh, eating and drinking. We need to enter into our closet. We need to take on the garments of soberness and sobriety. Jesus said, let your lights be burning. Amen. Say, guard your loins and let your light be burning. Because God's hope at this time are the people that are in this hall and people like you all over the globe who are seeking for the truth and the truth that is present in God's mind. God is looking for such men and women. Maybe some of us may have been confused by what I said this afternoon because of the reason of where you have been going or what you have been romancing with or who you have been romancing with. If you are confused, we can talk after this meeting. But if you know that you can resolve your confusion under God, we are praying along with you. But I am saying that the character of this hour is deception. And the very elect, if they are not careful, they will be swept by, this, by the flood of deception. So let's just talk to the Lord and respond to God appropriately. Let's just, let's just ask the Lord if, if we need for God to help us to wash our garments again. Let's do it. If we have a need for repentance, let's just say, God, I must have stained my garment. I didn't know. I was careful not to mention names because if I mention names, some of us will say, yeah, that is my man. I am leaving you to God to go and seek and search. Whether that is the appointed way that the patriarchs have followed. The Bible spoke about the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Let's look at the teachings and the writings of Jesus, of the apostles and the prophets. If that is the way they followed, and they became good examples for us today. Otherwise, let's just say, Father, I open up myself afresh to you. You call me for a purpose. There is a reason why you call me. If you need to repent, repent. He's our Father. Abba, Father! We should be able to come before me and say, Abba, Father! I believe that we have the whole of this. We can totally examine ourselves if we still be in the faith. I'll just pray because of time. We pray in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we are very grateful to you because you are. Without faith, it is impossible to believe. But they that must come to you must believe that you are. Lord, we thank you. You call us for a purpose. All through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Your one singular purpose is to bring a people to partake in your divine nature. To measure, to be filled with the fullness of God. To measure with the full stature of the Christ. Lord, you have not, you have not veiled from us, your, your plan and your counsel. And if there is something that you are pressing upon in this hour, it is that a people may speed up, may double up their speed in seeking to attain to 
the glory of this next age. Lord, we ask and pray. We know that the, the race is not to the swift. We know the battle is not to the strong. You spoke to Zechariah and said, it is not by might, not by power. It is by your spirit. Lord, we seek mercy this afternoon for a people that desire to do your will. Our confession this afternoon is that your will we will to do. Father, turn, turn us again, O oh God. Father, we ask, O oh God, help we come from heaven that will make us to think how you want us to think. To make us to behave the way you want us to behave. So that, O oh God, we can attain to that for which you have ordained for us. Paul said that I may apprehend the very reason why I was apprehended. Lord Jesus, we pray, oh God, we will not lose out in this battle. Irrespective of the situations and the conflicts, the contradictions of experiences, Lord, we pray we will not lose out. Another will not take our place. Lord, we seek your mercy. Help us, O oh God. Where there is a need, O oh God, to revisit Lord, the body of the hour in the hearts of your people. Father, in mercy, do it. Cause the light of the knowledge of Jesus Christ to shine brighter and brighter before us. So that our paths may be straight. So that we can walk with certain steps. To you be all the praise. Be glorified. We pray in Jesus name.